down Detroit. <laughs> oh, it's good to be in the house of labor. Can we hear it for Tyrese? I want to thank you for your extraordinary leadership and all of your words and the heart and soul that you put into your work. Like I know all the members of LIU and I'm everyone here does every day because we love our country and we know what is at stake. Thank you, Tyree. Thank you. Thank you. So it is so good to be with so many incredible leaders and elected officials who are here. Governor Whitmer was here earlier, Senator Stabenow. Your next United States Senator Representative, Elisa Slotkin. And I always want to thank Representative Dingle. Yeah, where is she? There she is. There she is. Stephen, Stadenauer, all of you for the work that you do every day. And to all the labor leaders who are here, I thank you all for your extraordinary work. Don't we love Labor Day? We love Labor Day. We love Labor Day. It's always been that way, right? The way we celebrate Labor Day is we know that hard work is good work. We know that when we organize, when we bring everyone together, it's a joyful moment where we are committed to doing the hard work of lifting up America's families. And I want to thank everyone here for that work and the way you do it every day, including General President Booker of the Laborers, <laughs> President Fain of UAW, <laughs> President Pringle of NEA, <laughs> President Slevin of the Utility Workers, <laughs> and President Weingarten of the AFT. Thank you to all of the union members who are here this afternoon. So on Labor Day and every day, we celebrate the dignity of work, the dignity of work. We celebrate unions because unions help build America, and unions help build America's middle class. It is true across our nation, and it is true here in Detroit. Nearly 140 years ago, in this very city, 10,000 people marched in one of our nation's first Labor Day parades. Many held signs that read, divided, we can beg, united, we can demand. For generations in Detroit and across our nation, the brothers and sisters of labor have stood together to righteously demand fair pay, better benefits, and safe working conditions. And let me say, every person in our nation has benefited from that work. Everywhere I go, I tell people, look, you may not be a union member. You better thank a union member for the five-day work week. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. Because what we know is when union wages go up, everybody's wages go up. When union workplaces are safer, every workplace is safer. When unions are strong, America is strong. understood the power of the collective and the power of unity, the power of unity. And while we are fighting so much nonsense 
that is about trying to divide our country, trying to pull us apart. Look to what the history and the present of labor tells us about the power of the collective and unity, the spirit of that work, as much as the product of that work, is very telling and gives us really good lessons about what creates strength. And you know, many of you know my parents met while they were active in the Civil Rights Movement. So when I was young, my parents, and I see some young leaders here today, when I was young, my parents would take me to the meetings, I see our young leaders, and, and, and take me to the marches, I was in a stroller. And from a very young age, I learned that when people stand together, when we join voices, knowing that the vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us, when we join those voices, we can drive extraordinary change, which is why I believe in my heart and soul no one should ever be made to fight alone. We are all in this together. We are all in this together. But I'll tell you, I think that there has been a certain backward thinking approach over the last several years, which is to suggest, some folks, them folks, to suggest that the measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down instead of what we know, the true measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you lift up. <laughs> who you lift up. That's the measure of the strength of a leader. Let's stop with the nonsense. And in this election, we all here know there are two very different visions for our nation. Ours focused on the future. The other focused on... <laughs> Let's just get through the next 64 days. How about that? <laughs> and ours, yes, my dear brother, is focused on the future and theirs is focused on the past. And we fight for the future. We fight for a future where all people receive dignity and respect and opportunity for not just for some, but for all. That's what we are fighting for. And so we are 64 days out from the election day. And in Michigan, mail-in absentee voting starts in 24 days. 24 days. So this election, this election and our fight is a fight for the promise of America. A promise. I love you back. And ours is a fight for the promise, the promise of America, a promise of freedom, of opportunity and justice, not just for some, but for all. But what we know is as we fight to move our nation forward, Donald Trump intends to pull us back to the past. But we're not going back. <laughs> we are not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. So, intends to pull us back, including back to a time before workers had the freedom to organize. As president, we will always remember, Donald Trump blocked overtime benefits from millions of workers. Tyrese talked a bit about this and opposed efforts to raise the minimum wage. He appointed union busters to the National Labor Relations Board and he supported so-called right-to-work laws. And if... Well, 
but here's the thing. Here's the thing. We have a choice here, right? And, and we're not going back, because we also know that if Donald Trump were reelected, he intends to give tax cuts to billionaires and big corporations. He intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. He wants to impose what, in effect, is a national sales tax on everyday products and basic necessities that will cost, and economists have said this, that will cost a typical American family almost $4,000 a year. He wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act and take us back to a time in our country which most of us remember when insurance companies, you remember, had the power to deny people coverage based on a pre-existing condition. Remember that? Deny people, children who had asthma, a survivor of breast cancer, a grandparent with diabetes. Look, America has tried those failed policies before. And they are failed policies. And we are not going back. And we are not going back. We are not going back. And instead, and instead, we fight for a future, a future where no person has to go broke just because they got sick. And so when I am president, we will continue to strengthen the Affordable Care Act. We will bring down the cost of prescription drugs, not only for some, but for all Americans. We, we fight for a future where every worker has the freedom to organize. And so when I am president, we will pass the PRO Act and end union busting once and for all. And I'll remind everybody on all these bills, we got to elect a Congress who supports that to be able to actually get that work done. We fight for a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. And so when I am president, we will continue to build what I call an opportunity economy so that every American has an opportunity to own a home, to start a business, to build intergenerational wealth for their family. We fight for a future where every senior can retire with dignity. And so when I am president, we will continue to defend Social Security, <laughs> Medicare, and pensions, just like we have done. And here's what I'd say to all the brothers and sisters assembled. We know this is going to be a very tight race to the very end. We know, we know, and I got your back, but I'm telling you, we know how they play. We know what they do. So let's not pay too much attention to the polls. Let's know, like labor always does. We are out here running like we are the underdog in this race because we know what we are fighting for. We know what we stand for, and that's why we know what we fight for. And we got some hard work ahead of us, but again, we all like hard work because hard work is good work. And to do that hard work, I'm going to count on everyone here, all the leaders here, for your work, for your organizing, knocking on doors, and getting folks to the polls. Because put bluntly, Michigan, y'all know how to win. You know how to win. You know how to win. 
So today I ask Detroit, Michigan, are you ready to have your voices heard? Do we believe in freedom? Do we believe in opportunity? Do we believe in the promise of America? And are we ready to fight for it? And when we fight, we win.